Can I still get a green card if my spouse and I keep our finances separate? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States. I have our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. In this video, we're going to be talking about the commingling of assets. That is a legal phrase. The commingling means to join up, to mingle, to bring your money together, and talking about how couples navigate the finances when it comes to trying to get a marriage-based green card. So most people know that if they're going to apply for a marriage-based green card, they probably need to open a joint bank account. That's sort of a basic thing that most people understand. But then after that, there's a lot of confusion out there and we've seen a lot of mistakes. And I want to talk about finances and marriage-based green cards. And specifically, I was talking to some other immigration lawyers the other day and we were saying, well, what do you think is the most important piece of evidence when applying for a marriage-based green card. And I had said when the couple have children that it's nice to have a baby that you can just plop down on the officer's chair if you get an interview. And I say that jokingly, but to have birth certificates to show that the couple is having children, that's really, really good evidence. But an older, wiser immigration lawyer said to me, Jim, I think you might be right, but also I want to make a plug for the commingling of assets, the joining of the finances. And that is really, really a good idea. That's a really smart, wise thought. And it's something that pretty much everyone can do. So let's just compare two different couples and see what we think about whether or not we think their uh, marriage is going to be found to be valid and um, whether the green card is going to be approved. Now, I don't want to tell anyone how to live their lives. And I know people have lots of concerns about money, lots of... um, worries about money and sometimes they worry about giving money to their spouse or joining their bank's accounts because the spouse has a bad credit history and i get all that but from a purely immigration state of mind from a a goal of trying to get our green card approved joining your money together and using that bank account to have your money come in and have your money go out that's something that most married couples do, at least in the eyes of USCIS. So if you're doing anything other than that, if we have a couple who puts all their money into one bank account, who pays all their bills out of one bank account, who files their taxes jointly, who actively uses that account versus another couple where everybody keeps their money separate, where there's maybe a little bit of action in the joint bank account, but nobody really uses it, where there aren't any credit cards or any major purchases, Think about those two couples. Which do you think is more likely to have a green card case approved? Because officers think that everybody is the same. Officers think that people should join their money together. Officers think that if you're not joining your money together, if you're not living together and spending your money together, that that means that something's going on, that maybe the couple doesn't trust each other. Maybe the marriage isn't going to last. Maybe it's not a real marriage. Maybe the couple's uh, been fighting or fighting about money or has money concerns. Um, this also comes up when you file your taxes separately, uh, married but, but filing separately. These are the kinds of things that trigger more inspection. And of course, what we wanna do as advocates, as trying to get our immigration case approved, is we wanna take away reasons for them to say no. We wanna take away reasons for them to scratch their head and say, hmm, is this a real marriage? And of course, there are real marriages where people keep their money separately. I'm not saying anything about anyone's particular marriage or the way that they have their finances set up. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here about what's best when it comes to trying to get your green card approved. So if you have a joint bank account and if you actively use it and if you spend money out of that account and if you join your money together as spouses, that's going to make your case much stronger. That's great documentary evidence. That's great stacks of stuff that you can give them. You can give them six worth, six months worth of bank statements, credit card statements, debit card statements, showing that you guys um, are spending money together. Maybe you bought a house together. Maybe you signed a lease together. They want to make sure that your finances are tight, that your finances are clean and that your finances make sense. People do a lot of weird things about money and for a whole lot of reasons, but from an immigration standpoint, this is what's best. And if you want to get your green card approved, This is most important. Now, if your spouse is overseas, you're going to have a whole lot more leeway than if your spouse is in the United States. For purposes of this video, I'm mostly talking about people who are here in the United States trying to get a green card, trying to get a 751 approved, trying to get citizenship after three years. These are the kinds of situations where you really could have problems if your finances are kept separately. Capiche? All right, so if you are going through the green card process and want to hire our firm to either help you get an immigrant visa for your spouse or a green card for your spouse, and you want to talk to us about the possibility of hiring us as your lawyers, 
give us a call, 314-961-8200. You can email us info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. If you're just looking for free information, nothing wrong with that. We've got plenty of great free resources for you. The first, our Facebook group. It's called Immigrant Home. You can join the Immigrant Home Facebook group. There's now 13,000 people in there talking about the immigration process, talking about processing times, talking about embassies, all that good stuff. And that, of course, is free. Just look for Immigrant Home in Facebook. We also have our YouTube channel where we post a couple videos every week. We also go live on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe to that. And on our live show, which is called the Immigration Answer Show, I do that three or four times a week. You can come and ask me any immigration question that you want for free. And then finally, don't forget our TikTok channel, at Immigration Hacking. We're getting up to thousands and thousands of followers on TikTok. We have a lot of fun on TikTok. And some of those videos are a little more zany than this one. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next video. Yeah.